Every time my homemade furnace shows up in a video, somebody asks me for a build video. They want to see how I made it, why I did the things I did. I'm no expert in this. I did the things I did because it was the best idea I could come up with at the time. There's things I would do differently if I could build it again, but since there has been a lot of interest, I figured I would take the time to go over this one and show you some of the details. It started off life as an expired propane tank. I had been researching casting my own metal for a couple months at that point and had the idea to see if I could turn it into a mini foundry furnace. The first step in prepping the tank was to cut the base off. Um, one second. Propane tanks like this have this metal ring on the bottom to keep it upright. Since I knew I was going to be laying it on its side, I had no need for that. So there's a couple spot welds. I ground those off and smoothed the bottom off. The next step was to separate the lid. I stacked up tape off this center seam so I had a nice even line and used a sawzall to cut all the way around and free it up. I should mention that I did remove the valve and purge the tank with water prior to doing this. I can't stress that enough if you intend to build your own purge the tank, do it right, do it safely because you are adding sparks to a container that held flammable material. Maybe just don't do it. After that was done, I cut the valve assembly out. There was a threaded threaded nut. I want to say it was about a one inch, maybe it was three quarter inch, I can't remember, but I cut that out uh, to allow more air to escape. That was pretty much all the cutting that needed to be done. And then I started to tackle the hinge. For the hinge mechanism, and this is no joke, I wanted to get as complicated as I could over engineer it just as, just as an exercise to see if I could actually make it happen. Instead of just putting a hinge on and having it fold up, I wanted the lid to fold up and out and then sit flat on the machine and keep it nice and compact. All of this is Home Depot aluminum. This furnace is more than capable of melting aluminum, but because it's so well insulated, I could get away with just doing aluminum channeling to do this. As far as measurements go for this stuff, it is three quarter inch wide by eight inch thick. It was very easy to bend just to get these slight curves in there. This one I did heat up to fold over and it is doubled up for thickness. Uh, the action took a little bit of tweaking to get it right but not more than a couple hours of messing around with it. So the lid now folds up, swings around, sits up and clears the opening so that getting things in and out is very easy. These are just stove bolts drilled through and bolted straight in. All of those are covered up uh, with the insulation so you never see that. It works okay. I'll work my way from here up to the fuel source just to go over all of this setup. This is just all plumbing fittings found at one of the big box stores. I can't remember which one. This is a one inch pipe, NPT fittings, and then there is this uh, collar welded onto the tank with a hole drilled into it and a set screw on the back so I could adjust the height. I'll show you the inside there in a minute, but there is a flare on the end. Uh, there's nothing inside of here. It's all just open pipe uh, into a reducer. And this is a one and a half inch fitting going into this nipple here. This is just screwed on lightly to be quickly removable and I'll explain why in a minute. Inside of there is a bunch of brass fittings with a tiny little hole drilled in a plug. I would take this all out, but it's actually welded in place, so I can't do anything about it. This is the best I can do. This is just a plug on the end of the brass fittings, and that tiny little hole is my nozzle. To drill the nozzle, I had to go to a specialty jewelry store and pick up the right size of tiny little drill bit. You can barely see it in there but this is a number 61 drill bit. So the propane shoots through the nozzle and it sucks the air through here and it shoots it down the nozzle through the flare and lights it up inside the chamber. From the quarter turn valve, it goes down this rubber hose to a 20 PSI regulator with a standard propane bottle fitting on it. And that's where I control the pressure of the propane going into the machine. Now I said this was easily removable and that's because while it's running, this stays nice and cool because the propane is so cold. If I turn it off, the heat starts to climb up through here, through the fittings, through the valve, onto this rubber hose, which I don't want. So as soon as I'm done, turn it off, spin this out and set it aside. That way it doesn't heat up anything inside the valve or melt the hose. Inside is where all the magic happens. As a base, I have this fire brick. I do believe it's 
95% silica. The place where I got it from was a specialty shop and they said that this will never wear out and this is as good as it gets. So I've been very happy with this. I also picked up the ceramic fiber wool from them. It's actually two layers thick right now. I would say, okay, so that's about an inch thick. So two inches thick of material, two inches in the lid, two inches at the back, and then all the way around. Underneath there's about an inch here and the brick sits on top of there. To hold the material in place, there are these little headless nails that are welded into the inside of the tank. And then they have these little stainless steel flapper things. You can see this one's getting worn out. It's been cooked a few times. But all it does is push over the nail and friction hold the fabric against there all the way around. If I ever needed to replace the insulation, it's very easy. Just pull those off, um, unspike it from all the nails and pull it out. For melting dishes, I use these silica dishes. This is for small amounts of material. I abuse these things. There is no built-in ignition source. I use a propane torch to start it up nice and slow, let it burn for a little bit to get the pole going and get everything warmed up, and then I crank it on full bore. I do intend today to modify my new crucible. This was an old worn out air tank off an air compressor. I cut off the piece that I needed. Because it has a bell bottom, it doesn't make a very stable platform for melting metals. So my intention is to stick it in there, heat this up red hot, and then get my blacksmith on and pound this into a concave so that it will sit flat. Cast out of this instead of those breakable silica dishes. When I went to put this in, it wouldn't fit. It hit the nails up top there holding in the ceramic insulation fiber. So I've taken the brick out and just set it around back and I don't really need it because I don't need a flat workspace to heat this guy up.